Hi, I'm Dr. Stan Steindl. Welcome to Compassion in a T-shirt. Today, I'll be speaking with Dr. Nikki Petrocchi. Nikki is a psychotherapist and academic in Rome, Italy, with a PhD in psychology and neuroscience. Having worked extensively with Professor Stefan Hoffman from Boston University and Professor Paul Gilbert from University of Derby and Compassionate Mind Foundation, Nikki has a wealth of knowledge of all things compassion, the neuroscience of compassion, and compassion-based interventions. Nikki, along with Beatrice Baldy and James Kirby, have recently published Essentials of Compassion-Focused Therapy. This was a long-awaited practice guide for clinicians, although it's not the topic of today's conversation. Today, we'll be discussing a recently published meta-analysis titled The Impact of Compassion-Focused Therapy on Positive and Negative Mental Health Outcomes, Results of a Series of Meta-Analyses. The study was a collaboration between Petrocchi, Ottaviani, Celli, Matosh, Baldi, Bazran and Gilbert, published in 2023. It's a glorious paper. Can meta-analyses be glorious? Yes, they can. I hope you enjoy this deep dive into the effectiveness of compassion-focused therapy. And so I bring you Dr. Nikki Petrocchi. Nikki Petrocchi, it's lovely to have you with me on, on Compassion in a T-shirt. <laughs> and um, Hello, hello. Thank you. hello, hello. It's exciting to, to have you. We were just saying that it in Birmingham at the last conference, we met and embraced for about a minute. I'm, I don't I don't think the embrace lasted the whole minute, but uh, we said hello only for a minute. And then I, I kind of came down with something and, and missed out on, on everything from there. But um but um and also congratulations on this this meta-analysis. It's always very exciting for us in the CFT community when something new like this comes out, and, and also to, to your colleagues, of course, as well, which suggested that CFT can result in benefits for people across a range of outcomes in both clinical and non-clinical samples. So I thought that was um very encouraging. But there's there's nuance to it. Like I, I noticed that there are some things you discovered in there that perhaps needs to be worked on and, and uh, you know, sort of improved upon really in, in future research. But I was really, um, I, I want to dive into that in a sec, but I thought if you wouldn't mind, if we could just hear maybe a, a little bit about you, about your journey into compassion and um, CFT and, and maybe some of the CFT research. Yeah. So what's, What's the story for, for you? Thank you, Stan. First of all, I'm so glad I'm, you know, you invited me. Very honored. This, you know, these chats you're doing are so so helpful because I think we also need to have kind of a personal touch to, you know, to compassion focused therapy, to us as therapists, to us as researchers, and you're doing such a fabulous job. So thank you very much. Thank it's you. It's so important. Um, yeah. Also because, you know, CFT and the science of compassion is spreading. People want to know more and more. And this is a wonderful channel for, you know, that people can have to absorb the wisdom. So thank you very much. Mm. And um, yeah, uh, it was a long, <clears throat> it was a long path in a way for me. Mm. I started uh, 13 years ago, 12, 12 13 years ago. And, uh, well, in 2011, uh, I was uh, in training to become a CBT therapist uh, in Italy. And, um, and uh, I remember I was also working in um, technically in a deportation camp in a prison for illegal immigrants. So it was kind of an interesting environment, very, of course, tough, uh, full of suffering, of course. And uh, I remember I was quite... Uh, I don't want to say dissatisfied with CBT, the classical CBT, but, but at least I would not be satisfied with how I would work with it. So I couldn't find um, that it was effective with the type of uh, problems and suffering I was encountering in this specific setting. And I remember one night, um, a little bit out of the blue, I found this um, 
uh, like surfing into internet, I found this uh, Paul Gilbert person uh, and uh, this uh, meditation on the compassionate image. And immediately, I remember reading the, the script and reading, of course, at the point, all the research by Paul Gilbert, all the books. Um, I felt really something happening. I feel like this is different. This is something that I think could really help. And uh, it was a very, I would say, somatic uh, inside. It, it was really, I feel like, oh yes. And and then I searched uh, the, the next workshop. It was at Le Canary, Canary Islands. So I flew there in the middle of the winter <laughs> around this time. And then I met Paul. And, and then I remember that I basically had my first CFT training and um, a lot of tears for me. And, and then... When I went back to Italy, I really felt transformed myself, and um, and I really felt okay. This is something really new. I wanna learn more. And then what happened is that a lot of my colleagues in the CBT community, because you know CBT, CBT, uh, have you know folks have always been very interested in you know uh, different um, evolutions of CBT themselves. So back at the time, CFT was considered. Uh, a kind of a branch of, of uh, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy. And so they were, uh, now it is not really, but back at the time it was considered like a third wave. And then they asked me to start um, presenting what I had learned. So I would start giving little talks to my colleagues and they would start applying the, you know, this uh, model. And, and then Paul Gilbert was super generous because he, uh, I mean, I contacted him and say, hey, I'm lost. I mean, I need to study more. I need to do more because it seems that Italians are interested in, in CF CFT. And then he said, why don't you come here? And uh, why don't you study? Why don't you do the advanced workshop? And, and so I started this amazing collaboration with this incredibly wise and generous man that is Paul. And, uh, and then my life has been transformed. And, back, and, and then I, um, I realized that I also wanted to do a little bit of research uh, so when I was doing my training in uh, to become a psychotherapist, I honestly didn't even know what a PhD was. So I didn't know what is a doctorate degree. And, and then one friend of mine told me, uh, why don't you study CFT? Like now you are a therapist, like why don't you go into a PhD and study uh, CFT from a scientific perspective? Um, I, I would never... I mean, I never thought that I would become um, involved in science. Never. I mean, I don't. I never thought I had a mind uh, that would like science. Uh, and in fact, sometimes it's a little bit like tough, like in the case of a meta-analysis. Uh, but eventually, uh, it was a nice path because I started. Uh, I learned the scientific method and uh, like how to think in terms of uh, measuring the effects. And uh, and so I was lucky enough to have again Paul as a as a supervisor and together with also my Italian supervisors. So but, but I was able to do the research on CFT, and then I went for uh, more than one year to Boston, Boston University, where I worked with Stephen Hoffman. Mm -hmm. uh, that back at the time was working on uh, how to increase positive effect. And the main way to increase positive effect was through loving kindness meditation. So I ran a study there uh, using, uh, I would say a component of CFT that is wishing well, right? That is not strictly compassion, but loving kindness meditation. And um, that was another uh, very incredible experience because I had the opportunity to do this uh, research with Stefan on uh, loving kindness meditation for depressed clients. And so, yeah, at that point, I knew how uh, to do science a little bit. Uh, I don't consider myself like, of course, a uh, super scientist, but uh, I learned enough to con you know, conduct my studies. And uh, I had Cristina Taviani as my angel, because she taught me a lot of how, how to write papers, how to do research, how to think scientifically. And, um, and yeah, from the moment on, I, uh, I started doing um, a little bit of research on CFT and here I am. And, and after many years um, of collaboration with Paul and uh, with Cristina Taviani, that 
um, you know, she taught me how to measure heart rate variability. That is like a physiological measure that is very often connected to compassion, uh, even if the connection is not so linear. And at that point, I, uh, uh, Christina and I and Paul realized after many years that we wanted to uh, do a meta-analysis, or, you know, kind of collectively uh, research the collectives of findings on, on CFT. And here we are with this, with this meta. So it was, a, I have to say, very like upfront that uh, yes, uh, me and Christina are, uh, of course, the first names um, of this meta-analysis, but of course, really, of course, this would never have been happened if without the collaboration of everyone, even like researchers that sent us their data and, uh, you know, and the guidance uh, by Paul and, you know, Beatrice, Simone, Marcella, Matos, and, and, and Jazz that. Uh, spent hours <laughs> creating tables and uh, you know it was really very amazing so mm -hmm. very happy that it's finally published I have to say. <laughs> I really love hearing the the personal stories I, I I really I appreciated what you said right at the start that you know this this channel is about trying to to make CFT a, a, the, the personal face of CFT a little bit and helping people to connect with that and to hear your story it's very inspiring you know the way that you know sort of one thing led to another and it really brought you on a on a pretty wonderful path i, I love how your your initial training of cft was in the canary islands i mean that's that yeah. seems um pretty special i must admit mine was in byron bay in australia which is you know mm -hmm. similarly you know kind of luxurious in a way um so that was that was kind of fun uh, just a little curiosity have you ever looped back to the detention centers or the 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 um the the refugees or or that population yeah. with CFT? Yes, yes, I remember doing uh groups at the time and um mm -hmm. these these guys were uh, not allowed to stay in Italy most of the times because they had committed crimes uh, in Italy so um when you're committed crime of course you're you're not allowed to to stay so you they, you know, police and the government tries to send you back to your country. And, uh, but the, uh, there were a lot of, like, histories of traumas and uh, shame and uh, sense of isolation. And I, I remember starting these little groups in my office, maybe with four or five of them, sometimes with the translators, because some of them were from North Africa or uh, and they will work very well because um, what I found uh, of CFT is that since very often it works with uh, imagery and visualizations and, and, and with this uh, innate motivation, so a lot of people understand them. Uh, the, the kind of sense that this intention to help can help. And, uh, and so I would add them be prepared for when they would be back in their countries and uh, trying to help them connect with a part of themselves that, that maybe have some wisdom about how to proceed in, in their life. And uh, mm -hmm. I remember um, very, very emotional moments. I think the most intense thank yous that I received uh, were from them. I still remember when I was about to move to the United States and I had to with, with a job. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember one guy and came in to, uh, he came to me and said, they have written, the name of my tag is wrong. I want my real name. I want my real name. And I remember uh, doing my best to, uh, to go to the police office and say, please, you need to put the real name of this person because he wants to be him and not called, you know, mis misspelled. This is already like a tough environment. So please, can you put their name? And and I remember the last day at this facility, um, I went to I went to him and said, "Okay, this is it. You have your name on your tag. Is your real name?" And he looked at me and said, "Thank you." And that thank you is still here. Uh, yeah. And I felt, "Wow, you really uh, sometimes can help people. You know, when you connect." With what their suffering is when you, when you try to mentalize what's really important for them and um yeah and i think it's very much connected to compassion really embracing um 
why people suffer and trying to understand why it's uh, it's important for them to yeah to open up about that suffering and trying to help it's amazing it's how amazing. how how sort of seemingly small but but you know powerful acts of 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 compassion or advocacy or even fighting for someone and you know that 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 you know you you seem to somehow manage to really connect with your own compassionate um self to to kind of do the advocacy which then kind of translated to sort of yeah just that little bit less suffering for somebody and and they were able to really kind of express their appreciation i mean it seems like that would be you know one of the the the, the big areas of suffering isn't it and and sadly there is so much of it around now people being displaced and and we have lots of things happening in the world that really is is causing that displacement and dislocation and people become lost and they try to find where they can settle and then of course yeah. that just activates some sort of threat system in in that country and then they're all kind of attacking and trying to get rid of them and so on and it does seem like a very powerful opportunity for you know compassion let alone cft and and that sort of work so yeah that's really yeah. i appreciate you just and, sort of explaining some of that yeah and it definitely helped me for example um the very core of the cft uh, psych education you know the, the idea that suffering is the nature of you know <laughs> this human oh, existence mm. and um and connecting with the the shaming uh mindset that somebody can have towards this suffering like does it's not a mistake that we are suffering all of us have uh, to deal with that in a way or another and um and this this shaming attitude i remember that helped me a lot because i clearly remember that um i would dissociate a lot from the suffering in this community like the, the suffering that they used to bring is so big that you're going to simply like okay whatever I, I clearly remember days where i would not emotionally connect but then i clearly also remember days where i connect too much emotionally so too much empathy mm -hmm. kind of a little bit of empathy fatigue i clearly remember being uh, overwhelmed by what they would tell me and so there would be people coming from with you know the boats and uh, seeing their friends killed and drowning in the oceans and in the Mediterranean area. So that it was a lot. And I remember CFT mm. helping me a lot exactly with this and, and remembering that I could find a way to connect with that suffering without being uh, destroyed and overwhelmed and also then useless for them, mm. but also uh, not being completely detached. And the, the idea of uh, the, the, the shaming approach of CFT, the, 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 this, this shaming approach to suffering really helped me mm. uh, connect with that suffering, also understanding that also my suffering was involved and feeling like, okay, I need also to take care of myself. I can only help up to this you know, limit and then I have to accept that it's not my fault if I can do more. And, and so it really helped me connect with that. And I clearly, when I teach, I always say about this a doctor, Mm. Uh, I remember one day, uh, I mean, that environment indeed, thank you for this question, because that environment helped me a lot to understand what compassion is. Because one day in the middle of my deep burnout, in one of those months back then, uh, before CFT, I have to say, I, um, I was very like dissociating from, from them. And then there was one guy that was older than others. And he came in front of me and I was uh, writing notes as usual, like as, as a little bit of as a number. And then all of a sudden I raised my eyes and I saw him and he was almost the age of my father. And then immediately I felt this person could be my father. And my mind created the condition for conditions for connecting with the pain of him, with his pain, because I felt it could be my father. And I, I realized that my mind was imagining my father being forced to leave his beloved field and, his, and, and cross uh, the, the Mediterranean area and be in a completely different country. And I immediately felt a sense of this is relevant for me. This person probably is a father of somebody else. And, and I really felt 
an, a sense of opening uh, towards that suffering and an intense desire that that suffering would be alleviated. I clearly remember mm -hmm. that it was not uh, distressing for me to have this kind of connection, but was a little bit almost energizing. That's when I understood that compassion um, that doesn't really involve fatigue. When probably you experience compassion, it's uh, almost an energizing force sometimes. Mm -hmm. And um, and I remember going to the doctor, the beauty, wonderful doctor in front of my office. And I would ask her, like, did you see this man? Did you just see this man? And she would say, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I had a big insight. And this man could be my father. And that kind of helped me, like connecting with the suffering in this way. And she told me the amazing, most like helpful thing I've ever heard. And she would say, um, she told me, not my father. And I was like, no, no, I know that it's not your father, but I'm, I'm just saying this person could be my father. I mean, we could be them. Your father could be born in Tunis, Tunisia. And she said, my father would never be born in Tunisia. And I was like, are you delusional? And so that's, <laughs> and I felt, yeah. and she was an amazing doctor, but she was so resistant to connect the, with the possibility of that suffering and with the fact that it's not our fault that people suffer, it's no one's fault. And I felt, okay, yeah, probably I think that we, probably we don't choose where we are born, where our parents, and, uh, and I realized how powerful the CFT assumptions are. Like we don't choose our body, we don't choose where we're born. Um, and yeah, this is what, <laughs> when I learned that you can help people Sometimes, but without com without compassion, without really connecting with the unchosen um, reality, right of their pain. So this is when I learned that. Actually, it, it, it's so amazing. You kind of arrived at sort of two of the key aspects, really, of CFT. One is what is compassion and self compassion. What are what are the different components there? And we need to be able to empathize and sympathize but we also need to be able to distress tolerance you know manage our own emotions through all of that to, to be able to sustain it and and have balance across the different flows of compassion but you also sort of just stumbled across fears blocks and resistances as well that was what the doctor really was experiencing in a way it was a kind of a a fear or a block around compassion and and for her it might have been along the lines of just fearful of the fatigue and burnout you know that if i connect too much with somebody then you know i will start to suffer in a way that i'm not sure i can cope with and so on and so up came some of those um those those blocks so it's you know it's just so amazing how you you reflected on on those moments and and sort of really arrived in some ways at at, at Paul's whole whole theory <laughs> and um and then a little bit later you came across Paul and it all made sense yeah. but um but no it really highlights just the point isn't it that with compassion we're working with suffering and it's such a privilege and it's such a challenge you know both really and and um but but yeah just really important work um, you mentioned the um, the heart rate variability, and yeah. it made me think I, I should try to catch you to talk again to that topic because that actually is a topic that I know you're you're quite humble about it, but but you are really you have a lot of expertise on the topic of of um, HRV and and parasympathetic sort of stuff and how that relates to compassion and and so on. So um, I might even put a link to some of or you know maybe one or two of your papers in that area as well in our description below for those who are who are interested in in heart rate variability but let's let's sort of segue into the this this meta analysis because it's it's very fascinating in and of itself i wondered whether you could start with a little brief primer about what a meta analysis is for people, just to give us a sense of, you know, kind of uh, conceptually what it is we're trying to do with this kind of statistical analysis. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I have to say that Cristina Ottaviani, the other co-first ever, would be much better than me <laughs> in explaining what the Manala is in. I mean, but I'll do my best because I've actually learned from her. And um, so what a meta-analysis is, is, um, is a type of study um, that tries to understand the collective, I would say, combined uh, power of an intervention. Um, because we can conduct a lot of studies. You know, maybe you are in Australia and you do uh, safety interventions on um, clients suffering with an uh, eating disorder. And then I am in Italy and I'm doing a CFT intervention with clients with anxiety. And then somebody, you know, Dennis Stierch in the United States does a research on CFT for anxiety. And uh, you maybe use uh, CFT in, you know, 12 sessions of CFT. And I use eight sessions, but you have two hour sessions and I have three hour sessions with you know and and then it just has uh you know an online platform and it does this train you know the, the treatment online so the idea is your uh, research uh, is, is effective you know CFT improves symptoms of eating disorder my research is effective uh and his research is effective okay but how can we say you know can, is there a way to combine your um, research on eating disorder with my research on, on, on you know, anxiety and, and then his research on depression and, and say, OK, uh, can we see whether CFT works uh, in general? I mean, without going in particular to any specific study, but kind of creating, uh, merging the, the effects of each study in order to find some kind of conclusion of whether CFT works or not, because maybe, you know, CFT works in Australia because there is a wonderful beach uh, and, uh, and, yeah, and, and maybe in Italy because we have lasagna and, you know, so we need to kind of to, to find some kind of uh, conclusion regarding is CFT effective or not. And in order to do that, uh, you, you have statistical analysis that allow to combine all the results in one single number that kind of tells that overall CFT is effective in reducing symptoms of this condition or that condition. Okay, so the, the, the easiest way to explain a meta-analysis would be that um, maybe your study is an apple and my study is an orange and then his study is a banana. How can you combine the results of this tree? Well, they have something in common, this is fruit. So in a way, the statistical analysis of a meta, you know, that a meta-analysis uses is a way to see the, uh, what all these studies have in common and trying to combine them given that they are all fruit. Gotcha. However, so you know, it also tells you, okay, great. So overall, this fruit compassion focused therapy works, but does it work better if it's a banana or does it work better if it's an apple? Meaning, uh, can you after you have told us that it works overall, but then you can do some kind of sub analysis that are called moderator analysis that tells you, well, yeah, it works overall, but actually it works a little bit better if you do it in the form of a banana or an apple. Okay, whatever. <laughs> you got it. And so uh, don't, don't ask me the specifics of the statistical analysis because I have no idea. Uh, Cristina Ottaviani, but I can give you the email address of Cristina Ottaviani and she would be very happy to explain exactly the magic that she has done. Um, but basically the analysis combine um, these results coming from different countries. And in fact, one of the main things that we found is that we, we con collected 47 uh, studies, a randomized controlled trials, and they come from almost 17 countries all over the world, including uh, Australia, Italy, Africa, Iran. And we'll see that, you know, there are some thoughts about results coming from different countries. So, um, yeah, this is technically a meta-analysis. And at the end of a meta-analysis, what you can say is that Yes, overall CFT is effective in improving, for example, mental health. Uh, it's more effective than control groups. 
So we can really say that overall CFT is more effective. And then a meta-analysis can also tell you moderators, meaning it is more effective at these conditions. For example, for females or for males or for people, older people or younger people. So you can have these combined results but also um, results that tell that, that tell you exactly how which condition meta mm. CFT could be best. Yes, it's, uh, I haven't sort of thought about it like that before. But yes, it's kind of it, it's a it's a combine it it combines the results and then also distills them further. So the combination gives you a sense of how everything you know kind of works at at its core and cft is it effective and so on and then we distill it out and work out what are the moderation effects there are there certain yeah. contexts yeah. or other factors that that also then predict kind of how well you know cft works well you started talking there about the the studies 47 studies 17 countries i mean i i actually found even that quite interesting because we're starting, I think, in CFT to really see a kind of a an exponential growth in studies. You know, as as time yeah. passes, where we're getting more and more. I remember with when with the meta analysis that I sort of helped with James on, yeah. um, there was only a, a much smaller handful of CFT specific studies. So that it was quite interesting to see just how many studies there now are. Yes, and we selected only randomized controlled trials, which means mm. study or controlled trials, which means there are studies that have a control groups um, that is a little bit of the, the gold standard for scientific research, because, of course, it, it is effective to say that uh, CFT helps people uh, in improving eating disorder, but it's even more important to see that it helps people in improving eating disorder more, statistically more than other conditions. Uh, mm -hmm. Because just changing from A to B, yeah, it says something about how effective an intervention is, but it's more important to say, okay, but what happens if you com compare this change with maybe another group, because maybe changes can occur also sometimes organically and naturally in people. So you really need to test comparison between groups. And that's why we wanted, uh, we, we decided to have a very strict uh, inclusion criteria for this meta-analysis, meaning that um, we didn't want, uh, of course, we only wanted CFT interventions uh, because we now know that even if there are several uh, interventions involving compassion, CFT, of course, is peculiar in the types of type of psychoeducation that, uh, of course, we use the um, evolutionary approach to compassion that is very different from other approaches. So we thought that it would be important to isolate and select only CFT studies, which would involve a specific type of psychoeducation that you use in order to introduce compassion, because that is also very important, in my opinion. When you work with clients, the type of psychoeducation education is very important, whether it comes from, I don't know, a strictly Buddhist tradition or from an evolutionary tradition and, and science, it can really help people engage with compassion more, especially, uh, in my opinion, when it comes from explaining compassion from an, an evolutionary point of view. And then also we selected um, studies um, that had, again, a control group, studies that would be, have the English language because we would be a little bit difficult to um, analyze the other studies. And um, at the same time, kind of differently from other um, meta-analysis, because there, there are, back at the time when we started this meta-analysis, there were three, four meta-analyses, including the one with James and, uh, um, but those meta-analyses, even if they're very well performed, they would uh, analyze only, for example, clinical samples. And that's, of course, a very specific type, a very, uh, an important decision, like I'm only focusing on people with diagnosed disease, but we know that Compassion focused therapy is uh, not been applied only, you know, to people with that diagnosed uh, condition. And we believe that at this stage of compassion focused therapy, it would be important to capture a little bit the whole panorama of 
what compassion focus therapy does, not only to, you know, uh, frankly clinical samples, but also to people that might present some mental, you know, symptoms and psychological symptoms, but not necessarily di diagnosed. And in fact, we had a lot of them in the sample. We were pleased to use both clinical and non-clinical samples because it's important to have this kind of uh, broad overview. And, um, and yeah, and so we started the, the process of uh, long process, which I procrastinated a lot. So I'm sorry, Christina, poor Christina, you know, she saw me and poor Paul, like, Paul, like, sorry, because well, how is it the meta analysis going? And I would procrastinate because it's such a, uh, like, um, very how many how many years did it take you do you think I mean, I, oh. <laughs> that, that, this is a shame uh, and uh, it was like almost two years so because we did the oh. first analysis in 2002 and 21 and then the second analysis in 2022 then to my uh, you know soothing uh you know to my in order to forgive myself i had to say well at least now we have more randomized control trial and in fact i have to say that when when we did the final the final analysis, there was this um, yeah there was a more randomized control trials, and that's why we have forty seven randomized control trials because in the only in six months from the previous analysis there were fifteen um, more randomized control trials that we could mm. include. Mm. And and so, just yeah. just just for the for those of you who might be listening, you know, le less than just less than two years isn't actually that long. I mean, this is a, a massive undertaking. You would have had to sort of wade through probably thousands of papers to try to gradually yes. whittle it down to the the forty seven that actually met your inclusion criteria. And then even there, you're trying to work out. Is this CFT, you know, and that that's it's yeah. interesting. You you would have put a lot of time and effort into making sure that that we're really looking at CFT interventions and and how yes. effective they are. So we started with more with one thousand and two hundred papers that we had yeah. to review, see the abstract, and of course you know the process of a meta analysis. So it's a long process, and then uh, trying to understand. I mean, is it CFT? It is a combination. I mean, it's fine if it's a combination, but we wanted to have the, the effects of CFT. So we had to exclude a lot of papers, uh, really. And then we uh, we ended up with this number of 47 randomized controlled trials. And I have to say that most of them uh, used CFT in a group format, which is one of the findings of our meta-analysis, which is still the main way in which CFT is used, or at least uh, the papers Research. report. Yeah, the research. Yes. What were the main findings there in terms of from yeah. all of these studies? So we basically there are four meta analyses where we performed oh. because a meta analysis it's performed based on the type of outcome that you select. Uh, so originally we thought we can do um, compression focused therapy on overall positive mental health outcomes. So all the for example, how CFT, if CFT is effective in improving well-being, compassion, gratitude, or negative mental health outcomes, that is, in it's effective in reducing depression, etc. So at the beginning, we, we had these broad ideas of dividing these two outcomes and do two meta-analyses. But then we realized, going through the the screening of the papers that it would be more interesting to have one main uh, question that is, is CFT effective in reducing overall mental health symptoms? That is uh, the type, the part of the meta-analysis that says, is CFT effective in, in reducing negative, out in, in having you know, an impact on negative outcomes, which include depression, anxiety, eating disorder, a lot of symptoms. And the second meta-analysis was a little bit of a zooming in. So we decided to say, okay, after this, is it, how effective it is in reducing the symptoms of depression compared to control conditions. The third one was how effective it is in reducing self-criticism, because of course we, it's one of the main outcomes, and how effective it is to improve uh, positive, uh, um, positive outcomes, which ended up being compassion. You know, most, most of the studies measured compassion both for selves and others. So positive outcomes uh, ended up 
being technically compassion for us. And, um, and the result was amazing. In negative outcomes, the effect of negative outcome was effect size of 0.72, which means that really the, the means between the groups, you know, in the, the head go through the CFT and the groups in the control group, they were really different at the post intervention. So, and, and it was a very strong effect size. And, and also something that I want to mention is that um, this calculation we, was done after re removing outliers, meaning that we, decide, we decided to remove the papers with the most extraordinary results. Mm -hmm. Because we thought those papers kind of could, uh, yeah, could bias a little bit the, the results. We because they are so the results are so extraordinary that there were four papers mostly coming from Iran that would show extraordinary effect size, and we decided in order to have some kind of um, uh, strict criteria to eliminate those these outliers, assuming that they would not um, talk about the, the majority of the others, you know, they would not yeah. represent. And so we did a very strict analysis. And even after the removal of these extreme outliers, the effect size were incredibly high. So for negative outcomes was 0.72 for, uh, uh, so, I, so I need to see the table because I didn't forget. Yeah. Uh, for a uh, circuiticism was 0.40. Uh, for compassion was 0.51 and for depression was 0.49. And consider that in some mindfulness interventions, mindfulness the, uh, could, the, the, the effect size could be around 0.20. For some CBT studies could be around 31, 35. So 72, I mean, uh, it's a lot. And um, and that's definitely encouraging. There are a lot of research we still need to do in order to uh, understand a little bit better if it works more for group settings or individual settings. But definitely, what we have about compassion is that it's really effective. Yeah, no, the, I'm interested that you, yes, removed some of those more... Um, highly positive results you know the the more extremely positive results to in order to sort of not not skew what we were finding there and and yet even yeah. doing that it was still you know really large effect sizes which as you say is is kind of a bit uncommon in in psychological intervention so it's it's fascinating that it was um yeah well it it is all all very in, encouraging Yeah, well, welcome back, Nikki. I, I it's um I worked out that it is it was the something nineteenth of January, I think, when we were doing the first half of this particular uh, conversation, and um, then because of various time constraints, here we are back again. You might not have noticed that I am wearing the same shirt, uh, so I specially made sure there was a consistency <laughs> across. The I last time. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I'll have to. Change. I'll have to check. I think that, that that's absolutely fine. Um, but um, you'd you'd really uh, very nicely described your meta analysis, and you'd described the methodology, and also some of the initial results, really, to do with the negative uh, emotions, uh, yes. depression self-criticism and compassion. And so we spoke a bit there about the the effect sizes across all of those, but we were just going to dive into some of the detail there. And table one of your paper is a glorious table full of thoroughly interesting results. So yeah, I thought if, if we could go back to that, tell, tell us, talk us through uh, some of those more specific results, the moderator results. Yes. In fact, probably that it, it's the most useful table, I have to say, of all the, the paper, because it really doesn't just say that CFT works, but also uh, what conditions it works better, uh, what are the moderators, meaning, for 
those of you who are not familiar with the chair moderators is uh, what type of conditions in the sample or for example for example it does it work more for um, you know men or for women or for you know trans people or does it work more for people with a diagnosis or people without a diagnosis you know it, these are important questions because there can be many differences um or for example does it work better for people with uh you know taking medications or not or people with for people with more severe symptoms or not because we could easily end up finding that you know it works better for people with more severe symptoms compared to people that are not really experiencing uh my anxieties and this is in fact one of the things we found so let me go through this this table because this table really captures um all the significant moderators um which means that um we we did many many tests so we we asked many many questions to this meta analysis many potential moderators and in fact i have to say that this is one was of the most uh, time consuming, but also the highlights of this meta-analysis that we really wanted to go through a lot of potential variables that could have impacted the results. We really wanted to go through that. Compare, included the, um, for example, the uh, inclusion of the developer of the CFT into the model. So for example, one of the questions we asked is that does the, the, the you know do the results uh, are the results impacted by the presence of uh Paul Gilbert slash uh Chris Iron slash you or slash James Kirby that are the you know people that are very very much involved in the CFT uh are is our presence impacting on the results because it could easily be that you know since I'm involved in my own trial it works better and so it was really important to see that and it didn't by the way so it, it was pretty unbiased so that's a good news so uh, what do you see in this table is that it is divided in three sections you know actually for for uh, sub chapters negative outcomes depression self-criticism and compassion uh, for each of these meta analysis we performed uh, all these moderators um tests and what we found for example um, is that for negative outcomes uh, interestingly there are many many variables that in fact not many but quite a lot of interesting variables that moderate the impact of cft on overall negative outcomes and for overall negative outcomes i'm i'm referring to uh, the whole spectrum of um, symptoms, I would say. So because the idea was not to zoom in initially, but to zoom in a little bit later, and as we did. But initially, what we wanted to test is, uh, is, is CFT effective on overall, overall negative outcomes. So depression, anxiety, binge eating symptoms, self-harm, et cetera. And what we found is that um, the overall impacts it's uh, 0.72, but this effect size changes. So what you see here is that one uh, very interesting uh, result is that if, of course, the, there is a passive control group, the effect size is 0.97, which is incredibly high. And consider that this effect, this table does not, is already excluding the extreme outliers. So this table, is a table that uh, captures the results, excluding the most extreme outcomes. Because um, as we know, uh, in, in every meta-analysis, there are outcomes that like they, they shine like stars. They have effects so high that you feel like, okay, what happened here? This is really too high. And we decided to do a very stringent analysis and, and to capture in this table only the results um, without these outliers, without the stars. And so that we really wanted to be very stringent on that. And so what we found is that, in fact, if you have a passive control group, which means a waiting list, of course, the compassion focused therapy works much better compared to this waiting list, but this is of course common among 
uh, all the you know meta analysis. Uh, however, is also very very effective when we have an active control group. Uh, in fact, the effect size is 0 0.49. Hmm. Um, and interestingly, the studies were 16 studies in the with passive control group and 66 study with active control group. So this is quite a nice comparison. I also have to say that, uh, for example, even if it was not significantly uh, from, significant from a statistic point of view, um, CF, like CFT seems to work better when it's applied um, as a pure intervention. So CFT only has an effect size of 0.70 uh, compared to CFT plus other interventions. For, so for example, CFT combined with treatment the usual or CFT combined to CBT. It is true that this comparison was not significant. But my feeling, I mean, it's not my feeling, but we, what we can see is that, in fact, and this is also one of the recommendations for future research, is that we don't have enough studies um, combining CFT with another intervention. So we have only, in this meta-analysis, only nine studies that tested CFT plus CBT, for example, CF-CBT or cf EMDR, I don't know, whatever. So the majority of the studies now are studies that apply CFT in its pure <laughs> uh, state, meaning it does, they don't combine CFT with anything else, which in my opinion, that, that was my personal um, opinion about that. Uh, it's interesting and it can tell us what the future studies can be because originally um, CFT as Paul Gilbert always repeated in many, many books, uh, was never considered just another psychotherapy. It was always considered something that could inform and could boost uh, and could strengthen other approaches. So I believe that something that is going to be very interesting in the future is to have more and more studies having uh, CFT combined with something else. Okay, this is what, what I feel. Another interesting result is that country where the um, study was delivered seems to be a significant moderator. So this is a little bit of a uh, intriguing phenomenon. We couldn't really understand uh, here uh, what was the case, but we actually found that in fact, studies conducted in Iran uh, commonly reported a higher effect size compared to other studies, for example, in Europe, it was kind of a double effect size. So this is intriguing. Uh, in fact, those studies are also the studies where um, there seems to be a um, smaller sample. So for example, one potential, one hypothesis here is that studies in Iran uh, have been performed on slightly more, more smaller sample compared to other countries. And that could have generated these very strong effect sizes because maybe if you have a smaller sample, uh, there are many other variables that could strengthen the results. But we don't know. We don't know really. We cannot conclude on why you know studies conducted in in this country are stronger. However, for example, study conducted in Europe seems to have. Uh, a slightly less uh, effect size, et cetera. Um, another interesting thing is that diagnosis, whether uh, so people are healthy, quote unquote, or pathological, so presenting a diagnosis, this did not moderate. So interestingly, CFT seems to work the same for people with an actual diagnosis and with people without, uh, you know, an actual diagnosis. And another thing that seemed uh, to be very interesting here is that the format of intervention, whether group or individual uh, delivery did not affect the results. So what I found very interesting is that we have 18 studies presenting CFT applied to group, in-group, 
And 13 studies presenting uh, CFT uh, conducted in an individual setting. And what we found is that the effect size is 0.75 in both, which is incredibly high. And uh, 0.75 for the group interventions and 0.71 for the individual intervention. So CFT seems to work the same uh, as regards its impact on negative outcomes. However, I have to say that it was not statistically significant. But again, um, what we can say here is that we need definitely more studies, but this is definitely a direction. Another thing that I think it's very interesting is the outcome here. That was a significant moderator. In fact, compassion-focused therapy seems to work much better for people presenting anxiety and depression. The effect size is uh, 1.01, which is incredibly high. And remember, this is while excluding extreme outliers. So we are really having a very high effect size. So it works better with anxiety and depression compared to other all the other conditions. And again, we were trying to understand why. But one of our, if you read the discussion, I was reading the discussion again because it was such a long paper. So I, you know, I had to go through the paper again. But uh, when you look at the discussion, our idea uh, was that uh, given that CFT was born initially for people with self-criticism and, and, you know, the, the original target is, was people suffering with depression and, of course, self-criticism and shame. Maybe, I don't know what your thoughts are, but maybe the idea is that um, it, it's still more effective for people presenting these this conditions because the original protocols, the original procedures were thought for this kind of population. And, and maybe now in the future, we will have more and more uh, applications and we will be able to test, you know, more ways of delivering a CFT also for, I don't know, now we have a lot of papers on eating disorders and maybe in the future we will have different results. But one idea is that it works better for the conditions it was initially created for. Well, I mean, that's that's um, uh, the, that's the outcomes for negative, sorry, that's the effect sizes for negative outcomes. And yeah, I, I was sort of jotting it down as we went that, you know, CFT seems to work you know, alone, or but also, you know, with other interventions. Um, it works for healthy and psychopathological samples. Um, when compared to passive or active controls um, across countries, in groups and individually, and especially for anxiety and depression. <laughs> so it's sort of the, the highlight points, I guess. It, it's, it's, um, it's quite remarkable, really. And as you say, uh, strong effect sizes um, uh, across all of those different moderators it's intriguing right it it's intriguing one of the thoughts i had when you were talking about anxiety and depression and the effectiveness there and and this isn't what is probably reported but it would be interesting for future research is is cft more or less effective for those with high or low self-criticism you know it, it does self-criticism being a part of a person's depressive presentation for example does that make them particularly amenable to uh, CFT? Um, you've used self-criticism more so as an outcome later, exactly. um, but it's an interesting sort of a moderator, potentially, as well. That's fantastic. In fact, I think that future studies should go in this direction, uh, finding uh, more moderators. You know, we, we should go, uh, we should zoom in even more and maybe test this, um, I would say, continuum, continuous moderators maybe works better for people with high self-criticism mm. and uh, as it probably does. Um, mm. is it probably, yeah, I agree. That's definitely a, a future scenario. And um, mm. another thing that I find quite interesting is that it's the setting doesn't, it's not really a significant moderator. That, mm. So in a way, well, I mean, it's intriguing that it works slightly better for face-to-face -face, um, setting face-to-face -face, uh, interventions compared to 
um, online and mixed intervention. So I have to say that even if you can see that uh, this, when the CFT is delivered in the face-to-face -face intervention, the effect size is 0.79. When it's delivered online and or in a mixed intervention, in, in a way or another, for example, self-help book, it is slightly lower. So I have to say this is not these differences uh, are not sig statistically significant, but in my opinion, it already tells something in a way uh, because when it's delivered face to face, in, uh, and this is true across all the three outcomes, it really seems it works better. This is not surprising in my opinion because you yeah. know I don't know. Do you what do you find in your in, in your practice? Did you have a sense well of well, it is I, that one of the things that I've noticed here is that the non-significant findings are as interesting as the significant ones, you know, so it is very fascinating that, for example, um, medications, no or yes, it's not statistically significant. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of interesting. But then the next layer of that is, I guess it's more of a qualitative look at the numbers. And, and so when you look at the numbers in that sense, uh, you can see that that it work maybe it works a little better for those who aren't on medication versus those who are, and this is another one a bit like that. That it's a it's a non significant result. So face to face versus online and mixed uh, are sort of not not significant, not statistically significantly different. There's a little bit of a difference there in the actual effect size. Uh, yeah. My the first thing that popped into my mind is is just the the role of the soothing affiliative system and the role of affiliation or connection or safeness with a facilitator and with other members of the group and that perhaps there is something in that face-to-face -face, uh, setting that fosters more of that that we're able to create a kind of a safe haven secure base either between therapist and and client or between a clinical amongst a clinical group and that 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 Kind of helps in the cultivation then of compassion and self-compassion but that was that was just an, an initial thought from me absolutely so I, I like the you know the fact that we are looking at them from like a kind of a qualitatively qualitatively point of view instead of looking at the statistics but i also agree that yeah it's it's intriguing it's mm. just to see numbers and and see okay that's probably something for future for future research and um, for example, an idea here, what I noticed for some for some clients, probably you noticed too, uh, moving to online, for example, during COVID, um, it kind of improved the quality of the session for people maybe with the high high shame. For people with high shame, having this distance in a way helps. Uh, I, I had better sessions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because in the real, in the face-to-face -face interactions, maybe especially at the initial, initially there are two triggered. Um, you, we know that we that we have fears of compassion. So uh, that would be an interesting thing to that explore. Would be very interesting as well. I I definitely noticed that for some, the the online felt very convenient, but also very kind of safe because I'm just in my own perhaps home environment and and there's a little little bit of um separation there and 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 so on um and for others they just couldn't get their head around it and they they felt too disconnected and and um and also even a little bit of the self-conscious emotion sprung up online because here they are on on the screen yeah. i noticed in particular my and I, I was very surprised by this but my younger clients often felt more uncomfortable on video online than perhaps some of the older clients did. So I, I, I was surprised because I was figuring that they would be all over, you know, sort of internet and online and whatever, but they do so much just through messaging and texting now that, that video actually created this, this self-consciousness. Yeah. Can, can I just say one final thing about this, this impact on negative outcomes? Yes. So that's a very important thing that I would like to mention is that uh, why is this important? Why is important that CFT impacts on this overall cluster of, of symptoms and, and negative outcomes? 
Well, this is important because as we know, there is now this um, idea of transagnostic approach to psychopathology and, and thinking that there is this, this, what is called P factor, this kind of unified factor that kind of explains why, uh, you know, people suffer. And so this is a little bit of a simplification, but in a way, uh, what compassion focused therapy always has remarked is that uh, we have, uh, yeah, we can look at specific symptoms, but at the very core, all of us struggle with this hyperactivated or hypoactivated uh, threat system and, and ways of coping with that that are dysfunctional, I would say, or functional, but with, with uh, you know, unexpected negative outcomes in the long term, uh, functional in the short term, I would say. And what is important is that it really, CFT really seems able to to target that very core element, according to this data, kind of like, yes, it really seems to be able to touch this, this kind of P factor, you know, the, this unified factor for psychopathology. And then, of course, we can take care of different protocols, different manuals uh, to help people with depression, and then something different for people with anxiety or eating disorder, but it's important that the core of psychopathology, of psychopathology is targeted here and in, in a very effective. Hmm. And so as we get depression, in fact, we kind of zoomed in because we found that uh, across all studies, the outcomes that uh, was reported more and more often was in fact depression and self-criticism. Now, again, we found a very strong effect size, uh, a high effect size, 0.49, what we found here again, uh, you know, uh, uh, leafing through uh, statistically non-significant finding, but qualitatively significant, I would say, because you can see, say something also when things are not significantly different sometimes. For example, here, what was uh, slightly significant from a statistical point of view is the fact that it's, CFT is very effective in reducing depressive symptoms mostly in people, in psychopathological people, meaning people with, a, with an official diagnosis, which are also probably people that suffer the most, which is, of course, very interesting. So the effect size was 0.76, 767, compared to people that are, quote unquote, healthy, which were just assessed for depressive symptoms, but they were not originally diagnosed with depression. And what we, and what we found is that uh, when people are officially depressed, in fact, it seems that CFT works much better for them compared for others. So, and this is, of course, very encouraging. And again, something interesting here, I would say, is that um, interesting, interesting here is that if you see the very first line, when CFT was applied in combination with treatment as usual, or CBT, it really seems there is a higher effect size compared to when it was applied alone. I This is not statistically significant, but I kind of feel that it can tell us that yes, CFT could really be a booster also of other approaches. And in fact, uh, for example, now that I am very much interested in compassion focusing MDR, for example, in, you know, how compassion can boost other validated approaches, I can really feel that the future could be in this direction maybe, or future exploration can definitely go uh, assessing how CFT can really strengthen evidence-based approaches. Uh, because we don't wanna throw them in the garbage, right? <laughs> maybe we, what I say, what I say when, when I teach CFT is that you don't have to throw anything that you learn in the garbage. Uh, you just need to um, realize that everything can become more, become stronger if you have this evolutionary biopsychosocial mindset in mind. And uh, the tone of voice, the tone of voice that the client has, it's crucial in determining whether this evidence-based technique works or not. Hmm. And also for depression, um, another interesting result, again, was if you go in, in the next page, for example, slightly better again, if, we, if it's other administered. So if it's administered 
by a clinician, the CFT intervention, compared to when it's self-help or mixed. And again, as you were saying, uh, it makes a lot of sense, in my opinion, that, you know, especially with people with depression, to, to see someone that is really there and, you know, uh, is there for you and uh, is helping through the very ups and downs of depression with its real presence, I think it's quite crucial. And, uh, and but again, the effect size overall for depression and um, it very, was very high. Something that you don't see here that you, we don't, we never mentioned is that there are not moderators linked to, for example, age or uh, gender. So all the moderators here are basically the ones that are um, continuous moderators and that we had to group up. But technically for gender, age, uh, we didn't really find any moderators for them. So that's, again, quite intriguing. That is very intriguing because I have been doing a lot of work with veterans, for example, often uh, men, uh, male veterans, I suppose, um, and running CMT groups. Um, sometimes there's an idea from people that, compassion will be too fluffy or too soft and or you know and or or sort of too much like self-pity or but I must admit that just anecdotally I've I've found a lot of those groups to to really um you know run with it you know they they, they pick it up and run with with this idea of compassion and and cultivating compassion across the three flows so yeah I suppose in some ways it's very interesting that that there's not a kind of gender as a as a um, moderator but I think yeah. I think anecdotally that that probably rings true. And in fact, it's it's interesting because you know compassion, it's the core of compassion is courage, as we know, and I think it's it makes a lot of sense that I would say maybe a man with stereotypical ideas of what strength is. Um, I think it's important that they resonate with compassion focused therapy, and that they're not scared mm. by. And compassion focused therapy and in fact i think that how you s deliver psych education in, in cft uh, it's it's a core element of cft because the very definition of compassion it's an intervention itself it, it kind of you know help people realize oh courage interesting so it's not like just being nicer to myself it's something more you know involves mm -hmm. my strength my courage and i, th I think it really helps people that are could be reluctant to that. For self-criticism, again, the effect size was uh, overall 0.40, so medium effect size. Um, this is inter interesting because um, uh, CFT was created for people with self-criticism. Uh, and you would say, oh, so apparently it's the smallest of all the effect sizes compared to compassion, depression, and the others. Well, this should not surprise us because self-criticism, first of all, is not uh, necessarily a symptomatic outcome. It's, a, it's a, a process. And as we know, paradoxically, it's easier to shift depressive symptoms than to shift the core process that produce, produces depressive symptoms. So self-criticism is a strong component is a strong defensive mechanism that is ingrained in all of us and specifically people suffering uh, and it makes sense that the effect is not like uh wow compared to, to the others but it's still very high mm -hmm. and very high compared a lot of other treatments and it really tells about the fact that self-criticism shouldn't be just considered like uh, cognitive bias, but really something that, that's a very ingrained process that is pro that probably requires more sessions. And, and you know, we did, we did recently a very interesting study with Paul leading it on bipolar disorder. And you can really see that applying compassion focused therapy takes time because people really need to change. There is a big mindset change on what am I, I didn't choose my brain, didn't I choose my brain, uh, my emotions. And I think that also telling people, I, I was talking with these severely depressed people yesterday, 
and mentioning like, did you realize that self-criticism, it, it's not helpful. And, you know, even just talking about how unhelpful it is, but also how linked to threats it is. People, even like very educated people feels like, I never really thought about that. And that's why I think it takes more time and more, maybe more sessions, but still it's a very high effect size. Do, do you know whether that measure of self-criticism would have largely incorporated the sort of the more self-hating and the more self-improving styles of self-criticism? Was it, and, and I yeah. wonder if there's a difference there that, that a more self-hating self-criticism might change more perhaps or something like that as opposed yeah. to the more self-improving, self-correcting style. Yeah, in fact, there is another meta-analysis um, only looking, not performed by us, but by other colleagues, looking specifically at the impact of safety on self-criticism. And I think they found exactly what you say. Um, so that for people showing paradoxically more extreme self-criticism, if I remember well, um, the, the, the effects are higher. But mm -hmm. I also agree with you, but I could be wrong. I don't really remember what exactly they found, the finding were. They found that it was very effective, but I don't remember exactly whether it's for the hated, I hate myself, you know, hatred, mm -hmm. self-hatred part. But I, I think it was that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I also agree that, for example, this could be an interesting sub-analysis to do in future. Mm -hmm future studies and future meta-analysis. The other thing that I that occurred to me as well is that if the self-criticism is even just down a little bit and the self-compassion is up a little bit, there's a sort of a, a com combination effect almost in a way because sometimes it's not necessarily about getting rid of the self-criticism, but it's how we relate to ourselves when we are self-critical. That can often be the the change you know, that, that that people so the there's a kind of a, a bring, bringing compassion to that critical part. Absolutely, absolutely, and uh, and and in fact, what I'm linking to what you were mentioning, if you see here, diagnosis, mm. healthy slash psychological. In fact, this this goes in the direction uh, you are you were mentioning in a sense for a psychopathological sample quote unquote psychological psychopathological they in which are probably more into the self-hatred spectrum probably uh the safety is more effective it's 0.47 compared to healthy subjects that from studies we know they tend to show more of a um you know self inadequate uh, aspects yes. of self-criticism the effect size is 0.28 so it's slightly um smaller and the i think it points to the direction mm. you were mentioning and, and um, compassion i guess compassion compassion uh effect size overall effect size is 0.51 so medium high effect size very strong consider that other meta-analysis uh like the they, they produced a fixed size of 0. 0.40, 0. 0.35, so 0. 0.51, it's quite strong. And it goes in all three directions, though there were not enough studies. Um, we were not able to really say it works better for self-compassion than compassion towards other than self-compassion. So we, and we wanted to include the three flows of compassion also because from a previous meta-analysis that we did on heart rate variability, we really found that um, all the three flows of compassion are really related to higher heart rate variability. So in a way, we look at them all together. And what we found here is that, again, something interesting uh, is that it really seems, uh, this is not surprising, that the format of the intervention, so whether when CFT was delivered in group, it was 0 0.559 as, a, um, as an effect size compared to when it was delivered individual, it was 40. It's still very effective, but in fact, it really seems, and again, this is this is a qualitative uh, observation of this data um, because it was not like statistically significant, but we can already kind of feel that group intervention seems to 
to be the, the, the strongest, uh, seems to have the strongest impact, especially when you want to have as a target compassion. And, and again, for example, here, it really seems to work uh, with healthy participants as well as with psychopathological participants. So we shouldn't be worried that, oh, maybe CFT doesn't really work in improving compassion for, you know, a lot of people ask me when I teach compassion for with therapy, oh, can it be applied to people with psychosis? And I would say it should be applied to people with psychosis. I mean, it's not that it's it's only for the healthiest, actually the opposite, actually the opposite it really seems to be a major um, help, especially for those who suffer, I would say. So, uh, because sometimes people feel, that they could have a sense of like, oh, maybe I will do this technique only when they feel better. But well, they will feel better when you improve compassion. And so that's, that's what, I, um, what I think. The other thing that really stands out there too is that the, the flip side is also true. It's also a really nice approach for the general population. You know, the, the exactly. people people everywhere, people who are, really suffering, you know, uh, from psychological distress and, and so on, all the way through to people who are perhaps not at that end of the suffering, but in their own way, they're, they're sort of experiencing life and life struggles, and they can really be um, benefit from it as well. So, uh, yes, it's very, very um, kind of optimistic findings in terms of how broadly it can be applied. Yeah, and in fact, I would say that our meta-analysis seems, seems to suggest that many moderators are not statistically significant, which is intriguing per se. Uh, mm -hmm. So that, that responds to the question, oh, but can I, uh, could it be applied even to this population? Potentially, yes. So it's, it's such a trans-diagnostic approach, and yes. it, is, it makes so much sense that uh, it, basically, the overall finding here is that not a lot of moderators were statistically significant. <laughs> so yeah. it is a result per se, in my opinion, even if we, we, we learn that we shouldn't comment on non-significant results always. We, in, in research papers, we only need to comment statistical results. But I also think that this tells mm -hmm. something about how transdiagnostic and, uh, you yeah. know, CFT in my opinion and, and, and also and, for example yeah. cross-cultural you know like the the yeah. the, the insignificant non-significant result there for country is very very interesting you know because we yeah. do wonder like how does the how do these interventions work in other countries in other cultures individualistic versus collectivistic cultures and uh, at least this is an, an early finding there was a smaller number of studies in other countries but um it the, the differences weren't significant there too. So yeah, I, I agree. I think the the non significant results are just as interesting. Yeah, yeah. They, they can tell us something, and and yeah, yeah. For future for future research, it's good for thoughts. And also the format of administration here again. Uh, this is significant, slightly significant. Oh yes. And and basically, um, if it's administered by other people, again, compassion seems to increase more. Uh, compared to when it's self-help or again mixed for example audio recordings so we should really consider that the group interventions are the most um, effective and in fact one of the things that we found from this meta-analysis is that it is uh, CFT so far has been used mostly in groups so there is a, the minority of studies are um, uh, conducted in, uh, in individual settings. And so probably future research should go in this direction, trying to see, for example, the, the type of methodology that you were mentioning before, maybe clinicians could go with their own clients and do, and I believe clinicians could do nice research with multiple baseline mm. uh, methods. Uh, it, it, maybe we don't, as clinicians, we don't have thousands of clients or hundreds of clients, but we can still do nice research if we use the right methodology. And in fact, I would like to speak about a little bit quality of studies and methodologies. Hmm. In fact, only 17 studies, so 36% reported that the trial was registered. Um, and this, is, uh, this, this should encourage all of us working with CFT um, to, uh, 
to conduct more and more of registered trials because registering trials uh, implies that we follow uh, moving on stricter and stricter criteria for choosing sample and choosing methodology. So we this will make our research um, even more significant, I would say, even, even stronger, even if I have to say that overall, um, the, the, the studies were well performed. So uh, there are studies that sh sh we should, as researchers, be more able to um, report also, uh, this is another thing, also unsignificant findings. So something that mm. we found from this meta-analysis is that there was a little bit of publication bias, um, which means that we tend, and this is not our fault because technically journals tend to publish only things that work, but we definitely should also publish when things don't work. And in fact, we this, this data were a little bit tainted by um, publication bias, uh, which means that only positive results were, were published. Um, not all the outcomes, but some of the outcomes had this particular uh, feature. And also something that we should work on in the future, and this is the last thing I would like to say uh, regarding the, the official findings is that the findings are too heterogeneous sometimes for some outcomes, which means that, for example, if I'm looking at uh, compassion-focused therapy for the self criticism, uh, in some studies, the effect size was incredibly high, and in other studies, the effect size was uh, smaller. And the question is, wow, that there's a lot of distance between the, this finding and this finding. What happened? Mm. So what type of, what variable in, was implied in, why did this happen? And the future research definitely will need um, to, um, to define um, maybe uh, protocols that then they could be followed so that we can maybe replicate more consistently safety. At the same time, we should not lose flexibility and creativity in CFT, because as we know, CFT is not a protocol, will never be a protocol, will never be a strict rule, uh, it cannot be. It will go against the clients that needs our flexibility. But at the same time, the, the future will go, in my opinion, uh, in this direction of having uh, interventions that are maybe controlled for, um, uh, fidelity. So we, we will know exactly what has been done. And, uh, but that would still protect the creativity and, you know, the personality of the, of the clinician, because I don't really believe we should become robotic uh, therapists in delivering CFT or any other therapy mm. for the matter. Mm. Just a technical question on the heterogeneity. In table one, That'll yeah. be the uh, sort of the, the the last couple of columns, I think, isn't it? How, how do I uh, interpret that column? Yes. So the test of the so basically, when you see heterogeneity, yes. Okay. Uh, when you see the asterisk, technically uh, it says uh, in the queue, in and the you queue. see the asterisk, yeah. it really says that there is. Uh, a lot of it heterogeneity there, meaning yes. that it is, oh, this is of course true for every meta-analysis. So heterogeneity, yes. I mean, we should we should not be incredibly concerned because we do meta-analysis exactly for this reason, to understand how we can improve in something. Um, so here, when you see the asterisk, it really says that that subgroup of studies, they, produced outcomes that are that could be a little bit scattered. So mm -hmm. maybe one study produced uh, an outcome that is uh, very high, another study that was a little bit smaller. And so findings were, were too heterogeneous. Um, and this should be, of course, this should be taken in consideration for future research, because maybe because we want to more we do more stringent maybe analysis in the future to see whether this heterogeneity uh, could be reduced. Because if we have 
findings that are too um, distant one from each other, yeah, of course you can always create a mean, but kind of like um, creates a little bit of a, it, it makes one finding collapse into another instead of uh, yeah. having a clear picture of, okay, let, let me see what really happened here. So some studies reported very strong effect sizes, some other not very strong effect size, and we need to understand what happened there. And, and when you see tests, so in the heterogeneous column, when you see the asterisk is when basically, uh, even when the um, outliers were removed, you can really see that the, the outcome was still um, affected by heterogeneity. So heterogeneity was still significant, which means that it, it could have impacted the results. In fact, this is a limitation of our meta-analysis, uh, and I would say of all meta-analysis, in fact, the majority of meta-analysis. And the, when you see here the test of difference, um, when you see the asterisk uh, here, you can see that that moderator was significant. Hmm. You can see that there are not all asterisks in the test of difference on the, uh, on the right. And on the right. Mm -hmm. um, this this is what we were talking before we were mentioning so, because sometimes yes. for example you see um for example if you see um uh negative outcomes developer developer involvement it is mm -hmm. 0.79 for um studies that did not involve a developer of the treatment and 0.57 for studies that involved the development of the treatment. So these two numbers seem different, quite different, but apparently they were not statistically significant. This difference was not statistically significant. However, as we just did, they could still say something. Maybe, yes. in fact, for example, in this case, only nine studies were showing yes, it was, you know, the developer was involved. So future mm -hmm. research should, for example, have uh, larger randomized controlled trials and, for example, use more active control groups. Uh, so there are many recommendations that can be, you know, read at the, at the end of the, of the meta-analysis. But overall, it's, um, this is how you read this complex. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Actually, the, the, the interesting thing about heterogeneity Sorry to to kind of get a bit fixated on this uh, for now, but um, was that the out of the four met the four meta analyses, the one that was non significant on heterogeneity was self criticism. So that's interesting because the self criticism effect size was a little bit lower than the other three, but it was it was more a more consistent finding, I guess, uh, across the studies. So. Uh, you know, that's that's kind of really interesting as well. It is very interesting. Yeah, in fact, it's probably smaller, but more consistent. Seems to be, yeah. That's right. Seems to be. <laughs> that's right. Thank you for pointing this out. Yeah, um, well, that, that, really, that really has helped me a lot, you know, because it is a, it is a, 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 an amazing paper, an amazing body of work. It's, it's a, it, there's a lot of depth to the paper, but by you just working through that table in particular, it, it just really has clarified everything. The findings are really thoroughly interesting, the, the, um, the significant and, and non-significant findings. And, and, but above all, it seems that CFT can be very helpful, which yes. is great. We can, we can keep going knowing that uh, going. It's, it's working. I have to say that this table in particular was done with, uh, you know, Cristina Taviani, the other co-author, first co-author, did this table. I still remember when I, I tell her, Cristina, I think we need a table that summarizes that. And she told me, like, <laughs> when you asked that we should do this table, I was like, this is what I, what I thought. But it took, like, a couple of days to do this table because... Uh, so thank you, Christina, for your immense thank help you. analysis and everything, because without her,
this would never <laughs> this would never happen but i have to say that this kind of uh, christina really helped me with this meta analysis because she was really s s the person who pushed for uh let's have a look at all the possible moderators let's have a stringent analysis and let's let's really go yeah. through everything what each has because that could really set the stage for future research and uh so um we need to be com compassionately not critical of ourselves but definitely we should look at what could be improved you know with mm. a compassionate mindset and and the future studies to really go in this direction so thank you christina for your yes. amazing patience mm. also for me procrastinating so much with the study because it took two years three years two years and a half so like i was like all over the place but yeah actually has been finished. ah what a team what a team it's a it's a really great paper i'll definitely put the link to the paper in in the description on 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 youtube uh and um so people can definitely have a look at that and and dive in what have you got happening at the moment have you got new projects on the go is, is there more research forthcoming nikki thank you for asking so i am um interested now in um again as i was mentioning compassion focus cmdr which is now what i'm focusing on um uh i mean i'm so intrigued by um the effect of bilateral stimulation because what i found is that it increases heart rate variability and so i'm, I'm a emdr therapist myself so I, I was trained in emdr and what i find found is that they are they really boost each other and um and then this is what i want to do research on i'm, I'm doing research on at the moment because we are collecting some data on in fact clients with a couple with clients and therapists so one idea here is that we want to see whether we can have a single session with self-criticism um trying to use also not, not only of course the compassion itself but strengthen with bilateral stimulation because they should have a boosting effect on each other and how that changes and it seems that it changes and uh it's very interesting. Something that is very fascinating is that uh, when people do compassion focus EMDR uh, and through bilateral stimulation, they naturally go into state of compassion for themselves and for others. So really, there seems to be something in, in bilateral stimulation that it goes in the same direction and facilitates compassion. And uh, so this is my, my love now. Another love of mine at the moment, uh, even if I, I you know, this time is uh, short and not short, but you know, I, I don't have a lot of time for research. Uh, so I do it at night, I guess. Um, but um, it's on psilocybin and so psychedelics. And, and again, we, we should really find more and more ways to help people um, finding their own way to compassion. And I think these, these incredible substances and, and natural molecules are such incredible helpers and uh, teachers. And so I'm, unfortunately, Italy, it's, uh, you know, I, of course I need to link with countries like yours where uh, psychedelics are allowed and are studied. Italy are still behind, um, but I'm looking forward to, to study more. And I'm planning to do a meta-analysis on um, compassion, psychedelics and compassion, because I really think that was something that happens during those treatments is that you naturally uh, link to your state of compassion and so I think again it could be a booster uh, so compassion could boost um, compassion focused therapy could boost psychedelic treatments but also psychedelics could really boost compassion focused mm. therapy so mm. that's yeah. what I would like to do. Which, which is interesting given the the CFT plus the CFT plus findings but I don't know if I can uh, announce this let me know if we have to take this out of the video but um you have agreed to <laughs> be the keynote speaker at this year's uq compassion symposium so we will be delighted to have you in our um humble uh sort of corner of the world and we're not yet sure exactly what the topic will be but uh, <laughs> it'll be in and around 
all of these yeah. wonderful things that you do. So this is something that's uh, wow. that's very exciting. Yeah, thank you. It's more exciting for me. <laughs> I finally come and visit you in Australia. Thank you yeah. for inviting me. I, I, I mean, it's such a, a honor and a, and a delight. So yeah, I'm going. It'll be very, very good. And so yes, everyone, everyone watching or listening, keep an eye out for those dates. I think it'll be probably sixth of friday the 6th of september we'll confirm that though as as time goes on but um nikki yes thank you very much for coming along um, and and giving us a wonderful outline of this these very important findings so thank you for coming on compassion in a t-shirt thank you for inviting me i hope you have a wonderful day it's autumn there right it's the beginning summer here so um i hope you are having a wonderful autumn at this point it is now time for the weekend so it's time so weekend Good. is always summer in a sense <laughs> yeah. All right. so, thank you very much thank you everyone thank you. and if you have any question just write me and if anyone wants to ask more about this net analysis just drop me an email and i, I will reply okay i'll put your details in the description thanks nikki so, thank you very much bye bye bye